What is up? Welcome to Build. I'm your host, Matt Forte. We are here live at the Build studio in New York City. Real quick, before we get started, a huge thank you to our friends over at Macy's for bringing springtime to us here in the Build studio. If you think these wonderful floral displays on stage are something, then head over to Macy's.com slash flower show. Uh, it's an annual 80-year tradition. There's one in New York, Chicago, San Francisco. Guys, it's a ton of fun. Uh, the displays are jaw-dropping. Hit it up. Check it out. Macy's.com slash flower show. All right. Now, our next guest. So exciting. Uh, you've seen... Of course, on Law & Order, SBU, as defense attorney Trevor Langan. Uh, you'll see him again this June in season five of TV Land's Younger as Empirical Press's own Charles Brooks. And in a fun, and yes, yes. You are correct to woo as such. And in a fun instance of life imitating art, as someone who plays a book publisher, he's here to tell us about his first actually published book. The delightful If the S in Moose Comes Loose can only be described as a rollicking, clever, and great way to have fun with letters. Honestly, uh, it is a wonderful ride from start to finish. It's super fun read. I'm very excited to have him here with us. Folks, please welcome producer, writer, actor, author, Peter Herman, come on. <laughs> Oh. This is it. There it is. You did it. I did it. There it is. <laughs> Congratulations. And this. I take this home. Yeah, it's pretty nice, isn't it? Very nice. Uh, the, uh, little known fact: this was the original size of the book, was it not? This was the pitched. Yes, uh, for the for the no kidding five thousand word first draft. I'm very excited so. to get into that detail. There's a lot I yeah. want to talk about, especially with this being your first book. Before we go any further, I know I asked you this backstage, but it's always important for me to start. Just Pete, how are you? How are you doing? Great. Perfect. I like. I like the. I like the how are you? Um, uh, g great. Sort of uh, an embarrassment of riches at the moment. Yeah. Oh, I got to imagine it's a very exciting time. You know, the the, the first book. You, you walk into a story. Have you seen like a stack of them yet? Like, have you held it? Is it real yet, or is it still a dream? I am. Um, I debated uh, telling you this, but I, I've actually gone to bookstores to visit them. Um, and, and it, I'm not kidding you. I, it, and it wasn't even. And it, it wasn't even like. I wonder if it's selling. I wonder how many there are. I really just wanted to see if they were, just to no, to see if they were okay. Um, and I'd like. And I saw. So I was. I was the crazy guy in the um, in the in the children's book department at Barnes and Noble. If you ta if you can books. So. if you if you can define for me how you, how you established the book was okay. Like how do you <laughs> to, to really establish that yeah, I'm crazy? How do you, how no, do you... really, it talked back to me. Um, I just wanted to. I I um, I I don't. Um, this is where it goes off the cliff into crazy. I I, Let's I just go. I no. I, I just wanted. I um, it's something that you make. Yeah. Um, and I and I think it's funny. As a kid, I remember. Um, it's funny. I remember. Wow. I remember. I remember. Uh, everything was alive. Right, so I, I, when as I was going to sleep, I, um, you know, I, I would see that there was a pencil on my desk, and I was like, ah, he's not with his friends, mm -hmm. and so I would stick him with his friends, right, because he was lonely, and so in that sense, I think that uh, things are just very much alive, uh, and they're certainly alive for children. They're still very much alive for me, and I think that's why I just, they, I wanted to make sure that um, I couldn't quite tell um, if, but they seemed to be okay. Um, there were a couple of them. They were together, and it was Scoped good. out the zone. Yeah, it was okay. They weren't yeah. under a vent or a leaky yeah, pipe of any kind. It wasn't cold. Direct it sunlight was okay. wasn't an issue. These nice. were all things, yeah. They were up against the end of a uh, end of a shelf, tucked in. Oh, and they're uh, not going to tip over. Yeah, That's they weren't going to tip over. They were good. They're they were safe. clean. They were not dented. And I'm a little bit... Um, fanatical about books in general like when I buy a book it has to be super pristine um, and they all look great that's I, I gotta tell you something. I know you prefaced it with saying it was crazy I freaking love that I think that's fantastic okay. I love that you went and did that <laughs> no you're this is a safe space by the way I don't exactly think anyone here is going to judge you exactly. everyone's pretty texting. good crowd he's bananas he's nice but he's bananas <laughs> Uh, before we get, all right, so we know physically the books were all right. Before we get into the process and the journey of, uh, that, that ends with this book in existence, here's the most important question. Do the kids like it? The kids, um, so, uh, so we have three kids, uh, right, 11, and our daughter just turned seven, uh, and our son is six. And so our, our, the, the first time that I read it to them, they, they could tell that I was super nervous. And, um, and so after I got halfway through the book, and they were like, Dad, chill, <laughs> Just relax, <laughs> it's us. So, um, and then they loved it, there were a lot of laughs, and then our youngest keeps asking for it, but I think it's political. 
I think it's like I think it's I think it's I think he's trying I think he's trying to get in with me. Oh. He's like, can we read if the S in moose comes loose? Can I have cake? You know, so <laughs> um, no, no, I'm, I'm on to you. So you know, he's identified that you light up like a Christmas tree when he responds oh, uh, positively. Sorry, absolutely, book, the kid's been eating nothing but use cake. That. You know, so it's absolutely yeah. He's no fool. You gotta you gotta respect that. You gotta respect that. Exactly. How old is he? How old is he? Six. 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 Smart dude. Oh, he's gonna be all right. Yeah, he's gonna be okay. <laughs> he's, he's, he's gonna he's gonna do just fine. He's gonna do just fine. That's pretty amazing. You know, in doing my research, I didn't realize this, uh, but I had read somewhere that you, prior to becoming an actor on this, you were you were an ESL teacher for Teach for America. You were an English teacher. I was. Yeah, we were the. I, I was. I was the uh, part of the first year of Teach for America. No way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. The, the 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 first uh, 1990 for the the beginning of the uh, of the Teach for America teaching corps, and I taught uh, in New York in the South Bronx at Morris High huh. at at Colin Powell's alma mater. Wow. So, yeah, yeah. Fascinating. Well, as we get into the whole, like, where did the idea for this book come from? H having been an English teacher, was this something that was in the back of your mind for a while that you wanted to do? You wanted to write a children's book? Um, the idea is, I've had the idea forever. Yeah. So, for a long, long time. And um, I, a part of it was, um, I think I looked at the world and I just um, said, what does the world need now? Um, and I thought that the world <laughs> needs a book about a cow and a moose that's... Um, or in a deep friendship. Um, I, um, Does it not I mean, need I mean, that? It totally could the have world, that. The world needs something. The world needs So, yeah. you know, and, and fingers, crossed, this fingers crossed this this might just be it. Um, and and on the topic of the world, in, uh, in, uh, in my fourth grade poetry contest, um, I recited If the World Was Crazy by Shel Silverstein. Fourth grade. In fourth grade. And now it seems to have come yeah. full circle now to the point where the world has, in fact, oh, it's gone, gone crazy. So yeah. um, we're, we're here now and, um, and, and this exists. But um, the, uh, tell me the, the a question that I just went off the rails on was teaching. Oh, totally, totally fine. It, the question was, as having been a teacher, yes. you know, and, and all the years that have transpired between teaching and acting and all these different things, have you wanted to do this for a while? You said you've had the idea um, for I a very the, long I time. I had the idea long, yeah. uh, a long time ago, and I had a, a lot of ideas that are crowded in a sort of not terribly well organized brain space. Yeah. Um, and so... It, it was a question of what I would push out first, um, and now that uh, now that the moose has come into the world, all the other ideas are slightly out outraged on the um, that this one got to go first. They're like, you know, me next, which is a nice situation to be in. That there yeah. are other ideas, but it started um, it started just with a with a rhyme, um, which I emailed to myself ages ago, uh, and it started with moose and loose, and then um, and then e and free because it goes if the s and moose comes loose and the e breaks free, what's left? Moo. So obviously there had to be a cow. Um, that's where <laughs> that the, much that, was clear. That much was clear. And so then um, the cow had to put her friend Moose back together. And that's the story. And it, you say it started with the rhyme. You have a bunch of ideas. This was the one. Was there a decision process or no? Just it kind of happened organically that this happens to be the one that came to the forefront first. This is the initial book. Why this one? Oosh, um, oh, boy. I, I guess... Um, I, I I don't know. Um, I, you know, but I, I think that it, it sort of worked this way. That I um, that I uh, I think it's important to just be with your ideas. Yeah. It's just important to be with them. And then um, if you if you water the ground, and then at some point, um, hopefully something will start. Will kind of push up out of the ground and sprout some leaves and grow a little bit bigger. And in terms of uh, the stickiness factor of, of the, 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 the most rhyme stuck to this one, and this one seemed to want to go first. Let me ask you this, because you touched on this very, very briefly in the, in the top of the talk here, that the original length of If the S and Moose Comes Loose was, uh, it was five, five, how many? 5,000. 5,000. It was like War and Peace, and then, and then if the first draft of the S and Moose Comes Loose, it was long. How, how did you end up with that? And were you very proud? Like, hey, look, honey, I did it. It's five thousand. It's five thousand. <laughs> you know this this thing. Um, I uh, the, the the part of the part of the process was actually. Um, so for, for those of you who haven't read the book, you know, if the S and Moose comes loose and the E breaks free, what's left? Moo. Um, and it, the cow then has this fantastic idea that she's going to get some glue to glue her moose back together, but she's out of glue. She's got no glue, so she has to spell it. 
And so she says, I'll get a G, an L, a U, and an E, four little letters, how hard can it be? Uh, and she, to glue her moose back together. So that puzzle, yeah. to actually figure out how to, in the context of a rhyming, animal-based uh, yeah. kids book, to actually make that happen, I was uh, in my writing studio office space uh, and I looked like a little bit like the mad scientist, you know, with the like the ein crazy Einstein with the hair all over, trying to actually uh, figure out the calculus of this thing, which ended up just being a lot, um, initially a lot longer. And there was one point, so in, in, in the story, the um, cow has to, has a friend who's a bear and she has to get a, 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 a bee from the bear, which uh, turns the bear into an ear. Um, and so I asked our uh, son, who was, he wasn't 11 at the time, it was a few years ago, if he thought it was just too weird to have an ear as yeah. a character in my children's book. And he was like, yeah, yeah. Um, dad, it, and I was like, great, it's going in. That's it. So that <laughs> And I love that, because there was that moment where we're reading through it, and I was like, well, if they take the bee, and, and I that's, oh, yeah, well, no, they did it, there, there is. is. <laughs> it is a, it's a giant Indeed. disembodied ear is what that is. It's, it's fantastic, I love it. Oh. All right, so I, I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't ask this. What, did any part of you playing a book publisher on television influence the decision to make a book? Was that something like put the seed in your head a while ago? Like, the idea way precedes this. Yeah, so, I would have Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And, and I, but, but when I, um, but it was, I mean, I, you asked me how I was, and I said it's an embarrassment of riches. I had I had a day where I'm, I was sitting with my um, fantastic editor, Jill Davis, and uh, the art director Rachel Zagar at Harper Collins, and we were sitting there in my editor's office, and we were looking at proofs and moving some text around, and and I got to go from there uh, out to Queens to Silver Cup Studios where we film younger and got to walk into the fictional office and I just thought like wow what a day what a life what what an what what incredible what incredibly cool stuff I get to do so well you've you've written before you've never this is your your first children's book was there was there a challenge did you think going in all right I, I know how to write I've got a set of mm -hmm. tools I've used them before it's gonna be I wouldn't say a walk in the park but I know what I'm doing and then you get into the thick of it and here you are you got disembodied ears flown mm -hmm. about you don't know what's going on. was there a challenge you were surprised by throughout the process of creating this um, I think I'll, I'll tell you honestly probably the biggest challenge and I think that um, you know I imagine that I'm not the only person who would say this, but probably the biggest challenge in any creative act um, is is a, a not always uh, terribly helpful inner dialogue mm -hmm. um, about uh, about moving forward. Yeah. And you know, uh, as kids, it's the you know it, it's the other kids who actually say people will laugh at you and um, you know it's not going to be good and what if it doesn't work out or or a whatever and so I have a a fairly richly populated um, inner chorus um, of uh, wonderful um, voices that have that have very strong opinions about what I ought to do and what I ought not to do um, and to find my way through that um, is sometimes challenging. And to be able to say, um, you know what, great, thank you. Uh, I'll definitely take the input, but I'm gonna go right. Um, so that, that sometimes is, uh, is a challenge and to, and to, and to learn how to, how to navigate that, how to negotiate that. Is that something you've navigated throughout the entirety of your creative life, of every project you've worked on, you've always had to navigate those voices internally and just mm -hmm. kind of plow forward and say, I, I hear you, but this is what I want to do. Um, yes. Yes. I mean, to, <laughs> to, to yeah. be totally honest, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then, and I think that, and, and, uh, and it's, and the, I think the tricky thing also is that there isn't one answer. There isn't one way of, of one way to get everybody to quiet down. Sometimes it's like, do you all want to come and play? <laughs> Everybody, let's see what happens. Yeah. Let's see if somebody might have some great input into this. Yeah. Um, and other times it's like, nah, daddy's home. And um, y'all got to sit down for a second. Yeah. I got some stuff to do. So 
Very cool. Well, I, I I love just getting this window into the creative process and seeing how you arrive at something. Because I was talking to uh, a documentary filmmaker earlier today, and he, he does a podcast uh, uh, called What Really Happened. And he was saying one of the things that he struggles with, everybody perceives whenever you do something like a podcast or, or something short form or short film, people think, oh, it's easier. Yeah, yeah. But the truth is it's harder because you have to pare things down. And I imagine the process is similar with a children's book because you have so many ideas. Yes. You have to pare it down. You have to keep it light. So I love getting this window in mm, how you mm, navigated mm. all of that. Uh, I got to keep us moving because we're running out of time here. But now, okay, it's done. You've written it. You yeah. have the text. Now we have to find the illustrator. Yeah. We have to find the artist. We've got the fantastic Matthew uh, Cordell. Am I saying that Matthew right? Matthew Cordell. Matthew yeah. Cordell. It is a beautiful book. How did you come across Matthew? Did you know him already? Did you look through a bunch of artists? How did it happen? Uh, I So I had read with our oldest son a series called Just In Case, which is this great story about... This kid, I think his name is like Justin Kasinovich or something like that. <laughs> Nobody can say it, so all his friends just call him just in case. Fantastic. Um, uh, by a fantastic writer named Rachel Vale, uh, the illustrator Matthew Cordell. So uh, when I ended up uh, when I ended up being matched with Matthew for this book, I had instant cred with my son, which was fantastic because he uh, he had illustrated uh, just in case, and I, and I was <clears throat> I was so new to the publishing process that I thought that I would. I, I would have the text, and then I would pick an illustrator, and I would uh, present myself as a package. That is not at all the case. Uh, and so Harper Collins um, matched, uh, uh, found Matthew for me, um, and I, and I, the one thing I, w I had endless, endless worries about, like, oh my God, what's the illustrator going to be like? And 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 the thing that the 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 the, the you know, I I made the process of writing this. Uh, sounds so torturous, like, you know, this battle with my demons. It was also an incredible amount of fun. Um, <laughs> and I wanted that spirit of play, of yeah. play, sure. which is so deeply, deeply precious, <coughs> deeply precious in a kid's life, um, to, to, uh, to um, be infused into the book and into the illustrations. Um, and I, and it was so remarkable to see this, um, to see Matthew with his playful line, right? That is so, you know, animated. That is so um, whimsical. Uh, come up with these, come up with these characters. And then we talked about, um, you know, how, how how to make the cow feminine. And then, you know, we tried a hat. And then she had a purse. And then she had pearls. And um, and then she had, and then she had, and it was lashes. And then it was lashes. That's and, all and, and and a scarf. And Mariska, my wife, for the for the uh, for the book party, for the for the uh, for the book launch party at Books of Wonder, the greatest bookstore, children's bookstore here in town. Um, she had a yellow scarf knitted Aww. for herself and for our daughter and for our dog. Um, <laughs> the best, the best, the best, the best, um, the best. And, and, the, um, and I think that, that any time, in any time when you get to solve problems that you love yeah. in your job, you have hit the jackpot. You know, when, when, you get, when your work presents you with problems that, and, 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 and conundrums and puzzles that, are, that delight your brain yeah. to, to chew on, I mean, my God, there's, just, there's just nothing better, That's you know? That's the dream. That's the dream. That's the dream. Then you're not working. Right? Then, you're not, then, then you're not working. Then yeah, you're yeah. just doing something you love to do. I mean, and also on the show, we sometimes look at each other, and we're trying, trying to figure out a scene, and we're like, well, Beat's working, you know? It's, <laughs> yeah. it's Beat's exactly. working for a living. Even, even the worst day on set, right? Uh, it's absolutely. better than that. Absolutely. Uh, all right, we've got to uh, keep going. There's, uh, I got tons of questions I want to ask you. I found out, too, in doing my research, you speak, is this true, four languages? Is that... English on a, on a good day, and then um, and then English. and, and uh, German, Spanish, and French. Okay, fantastic. So that is because you never know what you read on the internet, right? So I got to verify mean, first. Exactly. Okay, exactly. Good. So it is lies. So then, all lies. <laughs> well, here's the follow-up. Uh, real question. Now that I've established that, uh, you have all these ideas running around in your head. Yeah. Has there been any thought given to in a future project blending the languages in a certain way, exploring the similarities amongst the Romance languages, doing something multilingual at all? Well, what, what do you think? Thinking of with all of these ideas moving ahead, or does opening the door? Why does he look at my in my idea file? <laughs> That's just wrong. I well, here, yeah, because the other fear was if you open the door from English to all languages, that all yeah, the yeah, voices, yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. oh, now what do I do? Yeah, exactly. But yeah, uh, what, what can you tell us without spoiling anything? Um, I, you know, I um, I, I have, 
uh, on the in the non children's book realm, um, I, I'm I'm very interested in the psychology of language, right? So, uh, uh, you know, how how does a, how does the fact uh, that the how, how does the, the fact that the, uh, the French language sounds the way that it sounds affect the psychology of a French person? How does, um, you know, are, are they all, is it all sort of sexy and romantic because of the sound of the language? Which came first? I don't know. Um, like, is, is German traditionally uh, rigid and linear because of the sound of the language? I, I, those are I, I, endlessly interesting to me. Um, and, and then, yes, I, I, the idea of what happens to a word as it, as it moves as it moves from one place to the next, uh, uh, that that um, exciting idea yeah. is a, is a really um, yeah. I'm, I'm playing with that. You explore so, yeah. that through a funny little duck and a, and a cow. Maybe? Exactly, we, we got, got moves in there. Get an ear in there, my <laughs> God! It's <laughs> genius. Fantastic. All right, last okay. question. I'm going to turn it over to the audience okay. again. Wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't ask you this. Are you excited about season five? It's coming in June. Younger's coming. We're all excited. June uh, fifth. Fifth. June fifth. June fifth. Room you know fans. You. Fifth. Yes. Yeah. Confirmed. Yes, thank you. Um, we there was a little table read video that was online not too long ago. Some yeah, fun teaser wow. stuff. Uh, what what can what can you share? What are you excited about for this year? Um, so I uh, first of all, it's really good. <laughs> it's really good. It's good. Um, the, the 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 other thing I'll say is that you know in, in, when a show launches, you have you have all these storylines that you have to you know, put out to sea, right? And you have to and off they go, and then. When those storylines have lived for a while, when we've lived with these characters for a while, then uh, after a bunch of seasons, there's payoff, mm -hmm. and and that is now, um, and that I think that there is, the, the, uh, you know, I think that probably any actor will say, no, we have the best writers, we have the best writers, um, and the way that they have now, um, they have now started to, to, um, to tip. To, to uh, start to shake the towers that have been built a little bit is really exciting. When, that things are starting to topple um, and fall and rebuild and get um, abundantly more wonderful and complicated. Expertly answered. That sounds very exciting. Oh, God. Thank you. And nothing spoiled. Oh, no, nothing spoiled. Nothing Fantastic. spoiled. All right, we're going to turn happens. it over to the audience. Before we do, a quick reminder for those where my Here we are. Fantastic. If the S and Moose comes loose, guys, this book is so much fun. Get it. Read it with your kids, your friends, kids, everybody. Or just read it because there's a disembodied ear in here and it is worth getting to. Uh, let's go ahead and turn it over <laughs> to the audience. We've got some microphones in the room. The first one is going to come from right here. Hi, I'm Taylor. Nice Hi, to Taylor. meet you. Nice to meet I you. was just wondering, it seems that you and your wife are just so busy. You have children. You're an actor. You're a writer now. You have a foundation. How do you guys balance it all? Uh, it depends on the day. Um, it, you know, it. Um, uh, some days... We we actually think we're doing okay, and then and then other days um, it's like a flurry of sneakers and lunch bags and permission slips and um, and nobody actually is wearing their own sneaker or has the right permission slip and it was like oh my god I thought you were picking him up and he's got a play date and you know and and I think that um, and we we like everybody else think that everybody else is doing it better right and so. And, and I think that it's tricky because we, the things that we, we hear in interviews or the, th or the pictures that we see in magazines, they're so beautiful and everyone's got it so together. Um, and so we, we, we look at families and, and, and we think like, my God, how do they do it? They're, all their shoes are tied, you know? And, <laughs> and, and, and so we, we, we do our best with it like, like anybody else. Um, and then, yes, there is the aspect of being in, in, the, in, the, in the public eye. Um, and I'll, I'll, I'll tell you a quick funny story. So we were at the Knicks game. Right, so we're at the end. There, there's some pictures that came from that, and our six-year-old was super squirmy, super squirmy, um, and I was getting so tired of it. And I was like, "Dude, you gotta stop squirming." And so then I, um, and so then I, I, I gave him, I gave him, I was like, I was like and I, I, you know, I gave him, I have stern voice. It's like you have to stop squirming. And, and Mariska immediately goes, "Soft face, soft face, Peter, soft face," because, <laughs> because. because because we were we were courtside, and there's a picture of us. There's a picture of us 
cracking up because she said it and we laughed and that's when the the the, the wire photographer took the picture and so soft face is now is is now is now our, our thing soft face honey soft face so so anyway so that's the aspect of being in the public eye so it was funny that was soft that was face fantastic was good. thank you we got a few more coming our ways next question is all the way back here hi my hi. name is madeline hi madeline um i don't think you got too much into it but i just wondered what initially inspired your idea to write your own kids book uh, boy, um, I, you know, I, 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 I think that there's probably no greater sound than kids laughing, um, and there's that, and I like to rhyme, and those two things just seem to like a really rich recipe for a book, a and I also, you know, I, 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 uh, I. Because I grew up, I, I didn't grow up speaking English. I, I learned English when I was 10. Um, so uh, just language in general, if for, for me, is a, is a little bit of a playground. Um, and I like to play with it. Uh, and, I, and I think that, and that's what this book is a, a, about a lot. It's just language as play, that things aren't necessary. You can tear things apart, and they become other things. Um, and. <clears throat> um, and in in that, the the more that I read it now, the more that I the more I realize that at heart it's a book about friendship, um, and and you know the the lengths that those who love us will go to to put us back together again when we fall apart, and we all kind of fall apart sometimes. So, yeah. awesome. Thank you for that. We've got time for it looks like one more question. It's going to be right here on our green couch. Hi, I'm um, Danielle. Who Hi, do Danielle. you hope Liza ends up with? Charles oh my Charles. goodness! Ah. Right, to it. right to it, right to it. Um, I hope, I hope that. It's like, listen, pal. Who do you hope Liza ends up? I've been sitting, I've been sitting here minutes. listening to you talk. Talking about the moose. <laughs> Talking about the moose, the ear. Who's but really, lies. All right. So here's what's gonna happen. All right. Uh, this is how. This is how. This is how it's gonna go down. <clears throat> um, I hope that Liza ends up. I, I'll, I, I've said this before, and I will say it again. I think that different people <laughs> wake up different things in everybody, right? So there is, there are, which is, which is the beauty of friendship, which is the beauty of relationships. There are, um, there are things that certain people wake up in me that no, that nobody else does, um, and uh, so I, I hope that uh, she ends up with Charles. I hope that she ends <laughs> up with the person. Uh, who lights her up in the way that she most wants to be lit up, that makes her heart sing the song she most wants to hear. Um, and I think that, um, I hope it's me. So that's... Um, <laughs> are you going to pull up for that? Absolutely. Um, well, uh, we unfortunately are out of time, so I got to wrap this up. That but, uh, was that it, fast? it flew by, yeah. It, it goes, it, well, Peter, every time you're here, it's, it's just it so goes, friggin' it goes, fun. It goes, it goes super fast. Check. Rather you're here with the cast fast. or you're here wow. alone, it, it's always a treat to have you. So uh, I want to thank everybody for your questions, all of them. They were wonderful questions. Thank you for that. I want to congratulate you again on, on this fantastic book and, and much success. Uh, it, it's so much fun, uh, and, and I mean that genuinely. I was telling you, I read it with my thank niece you. and nephews and stuff. Uh, it's available now. Where can people find it? Obviously. Uh, Amazon, but you, you can find it pretty much anywhere. You'll probably see me there checking on the books. <laughs> but uh, when, when you go by, it's like, oh my God, he's here! Don't look at him; he's so weird. Um, <laughs> but but there's also, and I and I and I apologize for not having um, the, the 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 website handy. There's actually a website where you can go to find independent booksellers in your area. So it, so there, there are tons of independent books. There's actually this beautiful renaissance of independent bookstores on the Upper West Side. Shakespeare and Company is coming back. Um, there is the fantastic Books of Wonder on 18th Street. There's Books of Wonder now on the Upper West Side. If you want to go there, there's book culture. So um, I I. Uh, I, I think that it's it's a beautiful thing to support independent bookstores uh, or wherever you buy it. Listen, I am all for it. So, um, and thank you for doing so. Fantastic. Well, guys, one more time. Is this? I need to tell you. Put your hands together. Make some noise. And thank, you, Mr. Peter Herm.